What speakers have to guard against is acting out scenes like an actor and coming across like they're doing a stage play. Speaking is not a stage play. If you use all dialogue, then you'll come across like a stage play. And if you use all narration, you'll come across like a world news report. But if you have a good mix of narration and dialogue, you should be in good shape. We'll focus on that mix in a separate lesson, but here's one delivery tool you can use to break up your story, stay connected with your audience, and avoid the stage play syndrome. It's what I call the story step out. What does it mean? It means you step out of your story space, look directly at your audience and have a conversation with them. Then, after that conversation, you can step right back into your story space and continue the journey. Take a look and see if you can tell when I do my story step out. 1996, I'm on a flight from LA to Baltimore. That's a five hour flight, 1996, five hour flight. As soon as I sit down on the flight, a guy sits next to me. And I remember thinking, wow, this guy looks like an older version of me. Wonder what he does for a living. Five hours of the flight. The first four and a half hours, we say nothing to each other. And the last half hour of the flight, he turns to me and says, how you doing? <laughs> I said, I'm fine. You know, I've been here the whole time. And this is exactly what he said. He said, listen, I'm sorry I didn't talk to you earlier, but if you were boring, I didn't want to be stuck talking to a boring person for five hours. <laughs> and I knew exactly what he meant because I'm the same way. Now, what do most people do or ask you when they want to start a conversation on a flight? What do you do? Yeah, what do you do, coming or going? <laughs> he didn't say that. He looked at me and said, what do you want to do? I said, well, right now I'm an events planner, and eventually I'd like to be a professional speaker. I said, why, what do you do? He said, I'm a professional speaker. <laughs> I said, you are? He said, yes, as a matter of fact, I am the number one gospel comedian in the United States of America. I said, I didn't even know there was such thing as a gospel comedian. He said, that's why I'm number one. <laughs> now, Welcome back. So did you catch it? It's when I stopped looking from character to character and turned my head and eyes to look directly at my audience and I said, what do people usually say when they try to start a conversation with you on a flight? Then, after I got a few responses, I went right back into the story and turned my head to look back from character to character. And that's the key. When you're in your story, your eyes are usually on the other character that you're talking to or you're listening to. So turning your head to look at your audience is usually enough of a clue for your audience so they know that you're now talking to them. Taking a physical step forward and out of your scene even further clarifies to your audience that you're in a conversation with them. The key is to stop looking at the other character or at the scene in your story and look directly at the audience so they know you're talking to them. In that sense, it's not just a story step out, it's a story lookout. Take a look at one more clip from Melbourne, Australia to see how I temporarily physically step out of my story. I even step off the stage to have a conversation with my audience. And I got up there, I gave him the greatest introduction I could. I got everybody fired up to hear him. He comes up on stage, I hugged him, I said, God bless you. He said, well, God bless you. <laughs> and you know what I started thinking? Maybe he didn't see me in the hallway. <laughs> Even though we were the only ones out there. 